Hi, I'm Bill Shelby, and I'm one of the developers here at Stock Charts. And one of the areas that I work on quite a bit is the scan engine. Today, we're going to look at using the scan engine to find out performance. Now, there's a lot of ways the scan engine can help find out performance, depending upon what sort of metric you're interested in. But we're going to look at a couple of the most powerful ones, as well as some of the ones that make some of the some of the work to find them a little easier to deal with and a little easier to read in your scans. So we're going to first start off with percent relative. Then we're going to look at streak up, streak down, and then finally count up and count down. All right. So the first one we're going to go over, and I think this is the most powerful one, and we'll get into this quite a bit, lets you compare against an index or whatever other symbol you'd like to see. So you can see there we've got percent relative 20 dollar sign SPX greater than zero. And what that allows us to do is say, over the previous 20 time periods, whether it's days, months, or weeks in the scan engine, find me things that have gone up more than SPX. And just that by itself is a really powerful thing, but there's a couple of additions that we've programmed into percent relative to make that even more useful. Next is streak up, streak down. This is sort of similar to say your favorite sports team who's on a five game winning streak or an eight game losing streak depending on which city you live in. And um, it basically looks for consecutive ups or downs um, to find teams uh, teams or stocks that are on a winning streak or a losing streak. And finally, count up, count down. It's very similar to the streak up and streak down. But you can see there it says we've got count up 20 close. So what we do in this one is we give it a number of time periods that we want it to look across again days, weeks, or months in the scan engine, and the value we want to look at, and it will return the number of days or weeks or symbols that this has gone up during a certain time period. So we can say, okay, over the last 20 days, show me everything that's gone up or down six days or nine days or 12, and that gives us a little more leeway than the streak up, streak down. So we're going to go in and look at all of those. And we'll start off here getting to our uh, scan interface. So we're going to start at our dashboard here and we'll go over to the scan workbench. We're going to take time just to build a scan and go through this. Um, so I'm going to just do some of my favorite things here. I'm going to take this SMA, a single a simple moving average, and I'm going to put this up to about 300,000 shares over the last 50 days. I just like to get something that's got some liquidity to it, some, some volume behind it. Now we can go down and get our percent relative. We can choose this, click add. If you're new to the scan engine, it's very helpful to just use the, the scan components to build these pieces for you until you've got to the point where you can type them without having any uh, reference. Um, this will give you the correct syntax and it'll give you some common values that you can look at and begin to play with. So what we've done previously, there was ways to do this. Um, it was a lot clunkier. Um, what I would used to have to do years ago uh, before I even joined stock charts and I was a user, if I wanted to find out performance, I would have to say, I'll switch over to another window here. I'd have to say, okay, well, let's look up dollar SPX So we would take our number that we got from the perf chart and we can bring it over here and we would use something like percent change, which is also in our technical indicator area. And we'd have to plug that in and we have to say over the last month, find anything that's changed more than whatever percentage was that we got from our perf chart. So it works, it's a little tedious. Uh, it's kind of slow if you're changing things a number of times. Uh, if you haven't looked at the perf chart, you may just have to actually go out and manually calculate it. So. I had done this a lot uh, years ago and it was very tedious. So I decided there had to be an easier way. So that's when we came up with uh, percent relative. So we'll just start building a scan here and we'll choose percent relative out of our list. And I'll set this up for a month. So I'm gonna use 22, which is just an approximation of roughly the number of trading days in a month. It varies a little bit, but that's pretty close. And I'm gonna change this to five, which says let's find anything that's gone up more than 5% relative to the S&P 500 index over the last 22 days or say in one month. We can check our scan, make sure everything's correct. 
run our scan, and we got 1,100 items. So that's a fair number of items that are already uh, outperforming the S&P 500. So that's a, that's a good start, but if you're like me, that's gonna be way too many to go through. So we're gonna keep working on this. So one of the additional things is that we've added, and I'll channel Steve's jobs here, but wait, there's more, is we can take another version of percent relative, add it on top of this. We can change this SPX dollar sign sector. Now, as we know, a lot of the times our performance of our stock is somewhat dependent and affected greatly by the company it keeps in the sector. So if you've got a sector that's going down pretty heavily, you might find a winning stock that's gonna last a little while, but more than likely it's gonna get pulled down at some point if all of its peers are going down. So we can use percent relative in addition to the SPX, we can say, okay, find me something that's going up relative to its sector. This mainly applies to US stocks since that's mostly where our sector data is. And what it does here on the back end is it uses the, the spider for the sector. So if we're saying looking at Boeing, we would compare it against the performance of XLI, or if we're looking at Apple, it'd be XLK. So we look at the, the XL spider sector ETFs to determine performance. So now we can run this and say, okay, find us everything that's above its sector. So now we've cut them in half. So we've, now we've got rid of say half the dead weight of stuff that we just don't wanna look at. And we can go one further on this, as you might imagine, the next thing on top of the sectors are the industries. And what the industry does is it goes out and it looks at the symbol that's dollar sign DJUS, and then there are 104 of them that have an additional two letters. DJ US CR AL, which would cover airlines and air defense and computer software, et cetera. And this will take us further down that chain of trying to find outperformance by looking at everything that outperforms its own industry as well. So now we're getting down even further. Now at this point, you can add a number of different things. You can add scooters, which is stock charts, technical rank, you can add anything that you like to normally work with, the MACD, the PPO, the RSI, stochastics, whatever. Um, but at this point, you've already seen we've gone down from 1,100 or so items that outperform the S&P down to only about 450. So we've taken out a lot of what we might call dead weight in our scan already. Now, one of the things I like to put in this sort of scan is that we're looking for outperformance. And it's possible, of course, that if we're having a down period of time, that everything's down, then outperformance could actually be down. You could still have something that's negative if it's just less negative than everything else, but it still might not be something you really want to jump in on if everything's going down. So this is what I use the other uh, the percent change that I alluded to. I'll just take this guy and move him up here. We'll use our 22 days again. What this will do is it'll be a filter to say, don't show me anything that isn't actually going up because if it's not even going up, then I'm probably not interested in it. We'll just skip that. So this will weed out a few more items there. One of the things we want to do as well is we can look at the sectors. We're talking about negative performance on some sectors and some sectors will probably be down in various cases anytime in the market, others will be up. So one of the things we may wanna do is say, let's not even look at sectors we don't care about. So we were to go over here, we'll go back to our dashboard. We've got our sector summary up here. We can go to the actual sector summary we can sort by percent change and we can set this to our one month. So we're sort of apples to apples here. So then we can see this, the performance of the sectors over the last month. And we've got some that have been fairly strong, some that have been just barely break even and some that are just slightly down. So what we may wanna do is say, I don't even care about looking at sectors that are down because like we talked about earlier, 
if the sector's down, we may have a winning stock, but it may not last that long if the sector continues to go down or the industry tends to go down. It will probably pull your stock with it. It certainly will be a drag. Um, so maybe what we want to do is just let's look at the, the best sectors. Um, and you can do that however you like. Here where you could say, well, we've got these top three are up pretty good. And we got three that are sort of middle and then a couple that are just right on the edge and could flip the other way at any point. So let's just say, okay, we'll take these top three and we'll just see what happens there. So we're gonna go back to our scan and I'm gonna pull up something that I wrote earlier, just in the interest of time. And I'll stretch this out so you can pause the video and take a look at this if you like. But what we've done down here is we've added a section of um, sectors and I've added all of the S&P sectors We've separated them with OR clauses, which allows us to sort of turn things on and off. And if you're familiar with scans, you'll recognize these double slashes or the hash symbol as something that allows us to put a comment in, which tells scan engine to basically ignore this piece. Um, and what we can do is we can use that to our advantage and just, we put them all in, but we only wanted some of them. So we're gonna go comment these out, the ones we don't want. We wanted energy, financials, we wanted materials. We'll take this last or out so that our syntax passes its check. So now we can run this scan. Now we're down to 63. So what we've done here is pretty powerful if you think about it. We found something that has outperformed the S&P 500. It's outperformed its own sector, so its own larger family. It's outperformed its industry, so its siblings. It's gone up over the last month, and it's in one of the top three sectors, performing sectors over the last month. So we've really narrowed this down quite a bit from the 20,000 possible stocks in the, in the scan engine or more, 25,000 or so, um, down to 63, which is getting to be a pretty reasonable number. If we sort by scooter, which is a technical rank, you can see that this is backing up kind of what we've been doing. All of these are in the 90s. So the scooter uses multiple time periods, not just one month. It uses long term, medium term, short term. But you can see that even over the longer term, a lot of these which have been outperforming in the one month time frame have clearly been outperforming most of their siblings in the long term as well. So this is a pretty powerful way to very quickly whittle down stocks that are doing quite well relative to their peers. And of course, one of the beauties of the scan engine is, is you can change these numbers. If you're getting too many numbers, too many results, you can make it slightly more restrictive. If you're not getting enough, you can loosen it up. You can just play with the dials and tweak it to whatever level of results you'd like to have. So that's percent relative. Next, we're going to bring up our next one. This is another one where you could do what we're going to do with the scan engine before we implemented this. And this is going to find, we're going to look at streak first, consecutive days up or down. And you could do it like we've shown here. You basically just have to say, today's close is higher than yesterday. Yesterday is higher than the day before that, and the day before that, and the day before that. It's a little tedious and it's kind of verbose and you could just keep tacking these additional clauses on and changing the number every time. Or we decided we could make that a little bit more simple. We can take all of these and replace it with simply saying streak up greater than four or so. So we'll comment these out just as demonstrations. So we've got some, some and of course, what you'd like to do as well is every once in a while you need to just check your uh, chart and make sure that it's actually giving you what you say. And we'll change this to get a little bit more zoomed in, but we can see we've got several days of direct up, 
movement. All right, so um, once, what's a scenario where you want to actually use this? Um, sometimes we would get, say, a gap up. So we'll put a gap up in there. And we'll say, let's go back a few days and see what's happened after the gap. See what happens after. So in this case, there wasn't a lot that had a, a gap up and then went crazy, but we can see here, this is one that certainly did. We'll get our chart zoomed in here a little bit. So we have our gap up and then we had a number of up days in a row. So this is a way to say, okay, we, we know something that's had a, a, a gap up, earnings announcement, um, possibly some sort of product announcement, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What's it done after that? A lot of times, you know, you'll see a gap up and it'll fail, it'll close the gap and drop down. This will be a way to maybe say, okay, I want to find those gaps and find those that just took off right afterwards. This is our winning streak, our, you know, five games winning streak. And this could be, of course, reversed if you're interested in looking at the downside. Short side, you could look at a gap down and then look at consecutive days down instead. Now, as you start to move this number up, very quickly, you'll find that there's not a lot of things that are out there. We only found one at four days. It's probably not likely to get much more than six if we're looking at a gap up. You're eventually going to run out. You're going to get zero results. This one, of course, is on a pretty good run, but that's only one stock out of thousands. So what we can do is, like I say, the close up, close down. I'll get to that Or count up, count down. Relaxes this a little bit. So we say, okay, in the last six days, six days, I only want to see something that goes up four. We get a little bit more there. Our gap up is probably reducing some of our results so we can maybe take that out and see what other sorts of results we can find say at least over the last two weeks let's find stocks that have gone up eight days still a pretty good number we can check in again we'll zoom in a little bit here So count up, count down is a bit less strict than uh, streak up, streak down. Um, is very useful for finding trends. Um, another thing you can use count up, count down was with instead of the close, which is very typical, you can change this to whatever you like. You can want to see, I want to see a MACD that's going up or any other thing. Um, one of the ones that's also potentially interesting is volume. So maybe you want to find something that's gapped up and the volume increases as time goes by. So you're getting something that's broken out and it just continues to go and it's, it's ramping up and it's going. Conversely, maybe you wanna find something where the volume is drying up. Like if you're trying to find some sort of a, like a Wyckoff type situation where you're looking, the stock has been taken down and it's been just punished and sold out and the, the big institutions have been dropping it and they're just sort of waiting for the volume to dry up before it takes itself back up, you can maybe use count up, count down to look at volume as well. So those are three functions I hope that you haven't seen too much of there. Maybe you'll have a, a much better understanding of how you can use these to find better scans and better results with uh, performance over the long term. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.